Maya Plisetskaya. Directed by Vasily Katanyan. Photographed by Abram Khavchin. Music by the Cinematography Symphony Orchestra. The following members of the Bolshoi Theatre Ballet Company take part. Dmitry Begach, Vladimir Vasilyev, Yuri Zhdanov, Maris Liepa, Vladimir Tikhonov, Nikolai Fadechev, Central Documentary Film Studio. Maya Plisetska performs a wide range of roles, and in each, she is the same superb ballerina who masterfully combines pure classical tradition with a keen sense of our time. Anyone who thinks that the life of a ballet dancer is nothing but an endless blaze of glory is greatly mistaken. Prisetska was once asked if she was glad of the enthusiastic ovations given her. Certainly, she replied, the longer the ovation, the longer can I rest between dances during performances. dancing is glorious indeed. Long and arduous was Maya Plisetska's road to her height of perfection. These are her shoes when she was two and a half years old. Maya was born in the Messerera family where everybody was professionally attached to the theater except her father Mikhail Plisetsky, who was a Soviet consul at Spitsbergen. Her mother was a film actress, and her name, Ra Messerer, long appeared on the billboards. Well known too was the illustrious Asaf Messerer, an outstanding Soviet ballet dancer of his time. Well remembered also his sister, Sula Myth, who had been with the Bolshoi Theater for many years. Then their little niece attained fame but that took many long years and sedulous work from her early childhood. Maya continued to study at the Bolshoi Ballet School during the war. A teacher of many famous ballerinas, Elisaveta Gert, introduced Maya to the wonderful and complex world of the Russian classical ballet. These are rare scenes of those years. 14-year-old Maya is in the right-hand corner. Now we have a good view of her. She is moving towards the center. In ballet, there's the same discipline for pupils and for renowned ballerinas. Messerer, who for many years conducted the class in which Plisetska studied, demanded meticulous precision of exercises.
Раз, два и ассамблем. Plisetskaya had a rare combination of natural gifts, broad leaps, light soaring jumps, a lithe and supple body, wonderful arms. But all this is not enough for a ballerina's success, said the famous ballet master Jean-Georges Navarre. The language of ballet can only be understood, he asserted, when the heart commands it to speak. Dill, in the third act of Swan Lake, is often called the Black Swan. A new ballet is to be rehearsed in the morning. The woolen gaiters are worn to keep the legs and feet warm for dancing. of Sleeping Beauty, a great masterpiece of Russian symphonic ballet composed by Peter Tchaikovsky and staged by Marius Petipa. The ballet has now been revived by Yuri Grigorovich, ballet master at the Bolshoi Theater. Recall how Princess Aurora is cast under a spell to sleep 100 years. A hundred times Plisetskaya performed this act, and now she's doing it for the 101st time. Не 
подходите к ней слишком близко, а то нарушается рисунок танца. Стойте вот так. Пройдем с середины Адажо. Training continues under Marina Semyonova. In her time, she was one of the best performers of Aurora in Sleeping Beauty. Стало точно. Понятно? А ты ныряешь спиной. Повторим вариацию. Each second of dancing takes weeks and months of joint effort. the text of his role. In ballet, the text is the plastic pattern which the ballet master and ballerina sense in the music. Finally, the evening of the premiere arrives.
Setsuke's performance of Aurora brings out most distinctly the music of form, the clarity and simplicity of movement. Critic Belinsky compared classical dancers with statues come to life. Indeed, it is in sculpture that Plisetska finds so much for her art. Beauty of her movement is never formal. She rises on her toes because she wants to tear herself away from the earth. She dances because she cannot help dancing. She makes impetuous, fitful movements because she is driven by despair, or by a gay, jubilating force which permeates every movement of her Laurentia in the ballet of the same name. These ancient bas-reliefs have been very helpful to Plusetskaya in her work on Kachuturian's ballet Spartacus. Thus she created her Thrygia, the wife of the legendary leader of the slaves of ancient Rome.
the decisive scene of her role. Spartacus has fallen in battle. Is this a dance, a pantomime, or a supreme tragedy personified by a great artist? It is all these together. Lysetska performs a wide range of roles. Her transformations are among her strongest points, from ancient Rome to fairy tale Russia. From supreme tragedy to folk tale humor, so abounding in the score of the humpbacked horse by Rodion Shedrin. The composer dedicated the ballet to Plisetskaya, and not only because she is his wife. In composing the music, that is just how he visualized his Tsar maiden. Setsuka's arms, they're admired by critics and art scholars of all countries where the ballerina has appeared. Often ask her to tell about the language of her arms and hands. 
about the power of their eloquence. We too have asked the ballerina to give us an interview on the subject. You ask about my arms and hands. Well, the whole body really takes part in dancing. The feet, legs, head, neck, indeed everything. And, of course, the arms and hands too. The fingers are the eyes of the body, Stanislavski said, as if referring to the ballet. While the feet strictly maintain classical positions, the arms and hands can express everything, nationality, character, epoch, and any mood. Let me show you. In this way, the arms and hands transform the classique of the humpbacked horse into a Russian dance. The arms and hands express national character, while the feet dance in classical style. In Laurentia, my hands seem to hold castanets. Such hands are impossible in Swan Lake. That is Spain. This is India. And this is the Persian girls' dance in Mussorgsky's opera, Khovanshina. In the past, the arms and hands always formed a sort of halo in any belly, even in Swan Lake. Yet they are really wings. They are wings in Swan Lake, big, quivering, fluttering, any kind of wings, but wings. And they are my own wings, not borrowed from some other ballerina. The brilliant teacher Vaganova used to say, your arms and hands may not be too expressive, but they should be your own. I also think so. The arms and hands always portray an image. Thus, in dancing the dying swan, while the feet move in the pas de bure, the arms and hands portray the swan, its struggle with death. They are the swan song. The legs are the accompaniment. The hands are the melody. It's important to dance not merely to the music, but to dance the music. If a new instrument is heard in the orchestra, the ballerina must accordingly respond to it. If the violin plays a long note, my movement must be accordingly drawn out. If the orchestration changes, the dance too has to change. The music contains the text of my role. When I dance Swan Lake, I hear every word of Tchaikovsky's score. 
Юрий Чайковский.